have within ourselves and without um, the, the techniques that have come into modern theater. So it was the most original and the most creative way of telling stories, of communicating. So basically, the point that I want to make is that all these performing arts are, are about emotional communication and reaching out to the audience through using one's own emotions and trying to create those emotions in the audience. So what, what is very interesting is this whole theory of what is known as the rasa, the theory of ras, that the, there is the essence in what I want to project or what I want to convey to you. If I understand that essence, then I use all that is at my disposal, facial gestures, even uh, the, the way the eyebrows can move, the way the eyes can move, the, the hand language, the way the body can be used. Um, uh, with sound, with music, with poetry later on. And this is how we narrated our stories. This is how legends were narrated. And this became the first uh, uh, forms of theater. Um, uh, my, all these ingredients go to make up the performing arts. Voice, song, music, movement, facial and body expression, acting and mime. Now, one of our most important um, uh, uh, pieces of literature is what we now know as the Arabian Nights or the stories from Thousand and One Nights. These were also originally transmitted orally and developed during a span of centuries. The stories were, uh, were, move, uh, were drawn not only from Arabia, but also from India, from Iran, from Central Asia, and they are now considered the best example of South Asian literature. Tariq Inisma brought these stories on the stage and created a presentation called Ek Hazar or Ek Thi Rate. Uh, if everyone um, knows about Prince Shariar, who felt that he had been deceived by his wife and wanted to take revenge on womankind and decided to, to, marry, to, to bring a virgin girl to his bed every night and murder her the next morning, have her killed the next morning. And so over time, all the young girls of the area were, uh, started, uh, were, were being killed and there was nobody left. Finally, uh, the wazir's daughter, who's known as Shahrazad, she is brought to him and she then starts using storytelling. And through storytelling, she converts this brutal, violent man because she narrates a story, brings it to a point of climax and leaves it at a point where he ha wants to wait to hear the next, uh, what happens after, and she says that will come the next night. And so for a thousand and one nights, her stories had continued. And in this process, Sheryar had transformed uh, 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 in, uh, into another kind of a being. Um, what is most interesting about these, uh, uh, the, the original Arabic text of the Thousand Nights, that it marks the introduction of secular prose in Arab, Arabic literature. In, uh, in Tariq's production, the secular stories went through a process of mutation and the resulting ideological position of a mutated version was created so as to be able to produce a performance with relevant content for contemporary spectators. These are some visuals I want to show you from that production. And, uh, they, they, uh, and it, we tried to create the story emerging from one out of the other. So there was this box from which stories emerged, the costumes emerged, the props emerged, and the same actors kept on doing the same um, different characters uh, as the stories continued. Another piece of literature which we brought to the stage was a performance which was created uh, called Zikre Na Shunida 
or discussing the unheeded. This was an, an, uh, an anti-war play and it uses various texts uh, from literary, uh, classical literature as well, as well as contemporary. We combine text from Euripides. There was a poem by a woman known as Julia Starsky, a Doha of Kabir, and a text from a diary by a Vietnamese woman. Some images from this performance or this production. And this play toward um, uh, India, we, meant, uh, we performed it in very many cities of India. It has been performed in uh, Karachi, in Lahore, and um, has a very strong impact as an anti-war play. Poetry then, poetry as another genre of literature, uh, Tehrik has used a lot of poetry in its productions. I personally have used a lot of poems of Fehmida. Uh, I've uh, performed to Faisab, to Iqbal, to Rabindranath Tagore, and choreographed them to make our own statements, our own comments about society. Uh, one that I particularly want to mention is this dance drama based on the poem, uh, uh, on, the, on, the poet on the poetry of Fehmida Riaz. But it is not only poetry, it brings in verse as well and it's a musical it has movement it has dance it has poetry it has prose and one more um ji iske iske kuch visuals dikha de ha the it's the story of woman from uh, the cave times when man went out hunting and the woman w was gathering herbs and uh, curing uh, and, uh, and there are many other poems. It's the story of woman uh, over the ages, how she finally finds the strength within herself to uh, liberate herself. Another uh, piece that I would like to mention is, uh, is a poem that we took from the very famous uh, Vikram Set, who uh, is well known for his novel, um, An Equal Music and a Suitable Boy. Uh, he is also a poet and um, uh, he's written a book uh, called Beastly Tales from Here and There. And these are poems for children. And there's a poem there known called The Elephant and the Tragopan. We got Fami Daryaz once again to do an exclusive adaptation for us for the, for, of this poem. And we created a musical uh, called Jungle Jungle Zindabad, which is uh, about the environment, which is about pollution, which is about um, uh, preserving animals, um, water distribution. And in there, the storyteller once again, using dance and music, the storyteller comes in, keeps on narrating the stories. And we use live musicians. Um, Right. Now I'd like to come to, um, uh, um, to what another aspect that Tariq is trying to do, and that is to bring those women writers who are, who are not, who have written often but have not got known or found a place in the literary traditions in our literary history. And one of them is Amna Nazli. She was born in 1914, and died in 1993. She was a short story writer, a novelist, a playwright, and editor of a very famous women's uh, magazine called Ismat. She was born in Agra, and she was married off at a young age to uh, Alama Rashid al Khairi. Af it was after marriage that she educated herself, and her first story was published in 1933 in the journal called Ismat. Later on, she had many publications. She has a collection of short stories. She has also written some plays. And she was um, uh, somebody who had encouraged women writers a lot uh, in Urdu. She became the editor of Ismat. And through this journal, she was responsible for creating awareness about women's rights. Um, we, we, are, we are going to present an excerpt from one of her plays, which is called Doshala. And uh, perhaps this was originally written as a ra radio play. And uh, the first ever theater production of Doshala was premiered by Tehrik and Isma during our conference, Tis or Ek Sal, which we held um, in uh, December last year. Um, and we're going to show you excerpt from this play, Doshala. Dusra? Dusra? 
Okay. अगर लड़की 
छोटी है तो उसके कपड़े भी बच्चों के सही हैं तुम्हारे गलत इसका और शायद खाना दाना भी ना हो बस तो वहां से जो दोषाला मिले वो भोग दे